Hi everyone, happy Tuesday the 26th of March. Hamish here with the morning briefing from the Celtic Way and Tony with a tree growing out the <laughs> back head. of him is, uh, <laughs> is on as well. How's things? I'm very well, I just uh, speaking to you about that before we came on here. An interesting new hairdo, Tony. Exactly, and do yeah. I'm, I'm trying to follow uh, Dyson Maida, you know, and <laughs> grow, grow all over the place, you know, so... Yeah, in the office today, as you can see, Ryan, I think, was uh, here yesterday, so I don't know how he positioned himself. I know his hair's very precious, but hey, I just roll out of bed, Hamish, and just do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, very good. Fair play to you. Good to have you back on, Tony. Plenty to chat about, everyone. Oh, yes. Filter in. Filter in as you always do. Some of you come in late every day. I see the same names every time with their good morning Several minutes into the video, now nah, we don't mind. It's nice to have you with us. Um, as we say, plenty to to chat about. First of all, video is brought to you by MPH uh, Boilers. Want to take a minute just to thank them. They've recently become proud Celtic community partners, and they're bringing you a special home cover plan offer at the moment. You can get comprehensive coverage for just ninety nine pence per month right now for the first six months. This includes everything from annual boiler service to full heating system, plumbing and gas supply pipe coverage. After those six months, the plan upgrades to just £25 a month for the remaining six months, ensuring your home is always in top condition all year round. If you're interested, you know by now, message MPH Boilers Facebook page and quote MPH Celtic or call them on 0800 779 and quote MPH Celtic. Um, a big thanks to them and keep an eye out for their branding around the pitch. Uh, and Tony, we've still got this uh, incredible offer running. Yeah, it's the £1 for six months of access for all new subscribers. Uh, it's been an incredible uptake and we thank you dearly for that. Uh, really pleased with the numbers that we've achieved through that since we launched. I think it was last Thursday, Thursday before. And uh, yeah, Lots of people take it up, and I think a lot of people are just interested in getting the Kyogo Furuhashi artwork by Renown Football Arts made by Frank. But it is. Uh, and we don't blame good. them. We don't no, blame we don't them for blame that. Well, we don't blame them at all. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. But yeah, thank you guys. It's still running. It'll be running for the foreseeable future. So, if you want to join the Celtic Way family and get access to the videos and notifications and stuff like that, then hit that. Subscribe button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Uh, subscriptions and obviously sponsorships are vital to what we do on a daily basis. But thank you to everybody. Yes, thanks indeed. I uh, got a comment in there a second ago uh, from B saying, the game against Levy is the biggest game of the season, bar none. It's the, it's the next game, Tony, so it's the biggest game. But, I mean, we do have a big few days coming up as well and I want to chat a wee bit about what Thursday could mean yeah. as well. You wrote something yesterday about all as this. If, as if by magic it appears there we go. in the comment section. Yeah, I just wrote my thoughts on it at Celtic facing a week of reckoning kicking off off the pitch on Thursday when Brendan Rodgers will make his appearance in front of the do we call them the Hamden weeks? Do we get away with that? Uh, but those, Blazers. Yeah, the Blazers at Hamden, yeah. Brendan Rodgers will be cited, has been cited, and will respond to the charges of labelling John Beaton incompetent. And I think he didn't actually mention Don Robertson, but he was, uh, was kind of umbrella, wasn't it? The two of them were getting labelled incompetent. Yeah. And I think that's the charge that Brendan Rodgers will have to answer. He's been cited for those comments because you're not allowed to label uh, referees, officials, uh, say anything disparaging towards them, and you're certainly not allowed to name them. So it carries an automatic two-game ban, two to twenty-game ban. Right? That's that's the kind of parameters of it. But there's three. I've said this before. When we spoke about it the first time. I addressed this. And I've written it in that piece. If you want to have a look at it, three courses of action open to the SFA. You can get a fine, you can get an automatic ban, or you can get a censure for you know to what as towards his future conduct. Mm-hmm. Might even be a ban that's suspended in that case. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hamish, you know, so it's it remains to be seen what the SFA actually do. But if he's banned, he's automatically going to miss Livingston and Rangers. If it's two, anything other than that, then he misses more obviously, you know. But you know, lots of people saying that. Uh, 
I think uh, Celtic will have their day in court. There's been various rumour mills. You've probably read all the stuff about things that have happened, supposedly with tapes from Tyne Castle. Crawford Allen's fallen on his sword, uh, and, but he'll remain in situ till the end of the season or till a successor is appointed. So the kind of backdrop and, and background to it's all, I don't know, it's all very unsavoury, isn't it? Really? When you, when you look at it, you know, and Brendan Rodgers, by the way, has never been cited before for comments at all in mm-hmm. both these stints as a manager in Scotland so far. So in those kind of terms, and I said it in that piece, it's his first offence. So it depends on how lenient they want him to be. And also, this is comments that he's made in the press. This is not match comments or comments that happened during the game. So it's slightly lesser offence, if you get is what it? I mean. Okay. Yeah. It's so as opposed a, to like if he'd confronted the yes. referee after the match. Uh-huh. Or did it during the game to the fourth official or whoever or, uh, you know, so I you know, from my knowledge and speaking to people that's so it just depends how much the SFA want to make an example of Brendan Rogers having, you know, spoken out against the referees. That's that's the crux of it all here and the incompetence that 12 letter word is the one that's landed them in the dock, basically. Mm. So uh, we'll see what will happen. But again, I think Celtic are, are going to go there and, and fight it and back their manager on this one. So it remains to be seen what happens on Thursday. But it'll be interesting, won't it? Oh, yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting. I, I don't really have much of an indication as to what way things will go. As you say, if you, if you look at the the black and white, and you can say what you want about the refereeing performance, and you can say what you want about the mm-hmm. the lack of accountability f- for, you know, match officials, VAR officials, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, Rogers did literally use the word incompetent, and yeah. in the SFA rules there is literally, again, yeah. um, a mention of not questioning the competence of officials. So he's fallen foul of that, clearly. Um, and that's why he's been cited. But it will be interesting to see, you know, what what the kind of end result is here. Um, I mean, do you know if they'll take things like previous or, or lack of previous misdemeanors into account in this thing, or, or will it just be a, a default? You know, you've broken the rules. There's a couple of matches. I think it's certainly mitigating, isn't it? In terms of this is a guy who's never been in front of them before. He's never spoken yeah. ill of referees. He made a point at the time of saying that. It's not, I don't normally speak about referees at all. And uh, I think he said that he was asked if it was one of the worst instances of refereeing he's seen in it. And that was kind of what prompted it. Because he said, yeah, it was up there. Because it's not, it's never East. I, I don't remember him either doing it with Swansea or Liverpool. No, no. And Leicester, to, to my knowledge. Somebody can maybe. Uh, correct me in that, but it's just not what he does. Uh, so I, I what, think in terms of mitigation, then you would have to say he's he's of of exemplary, char- exemplary character in that sense. So yeah. again, it, it it just it all come down to the bloodlust of the SFA in terms of making Brendan Rodgers, uh, you know, throwing the book at him for those comments, which go against the rules and that's that's what he is bang tonight for and he's also named John Beaton as well so he could be in bother for that but I think Celtic's lawyers are going to try and fight that and you know explain that he is of of decent character and I don't know if they they would maybe uh, suspend some kind of ban Hamish that's where I'm leaning towards without without knowing as much as you a a sense that could be where it heads his future conduct that will kick in yeah, yeah. if he ever oversteps the mark again. Or, or even possibly, you know, a two-game ban with one of them suspended, like he might miss Livingston but be back for Ibrook, something like that. Possibly, I, I mean, that. I, these are all kind of, uh, you know, things that are open to them. Uh, I, just, I just know that it carries a minimum two-game ban, maximum 20, doesn't it? So I, I'm like you. I, I I'm not so. Sh- I'm not sure if they can uh, suspend one of them. I, I'm I'm kind of that kind of up in the air for me. But I think that would make sense 
to give yeah. him a ban but suspend him, suspend him and uh, censure him for future conduct, you know, and say, right, if it happens again, it kicks in, you know, because I think a lot of Celtic supporters will be up in arms if he is banned from yeah. Ibrox, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. And then conspiracy theories will have a field date as well. But I spoke to Paul Lambert last week, he said it didn't really matter if the manager's there or not. And I tend to agree with him because players should know what to do. They, they don't have to look to the side for guidance. But you could also again, fire them up more. Correct. And I guess it's just the mood music surrounding that. But if Brendan goes into the dock on Thursday and he's banned for two games and you know people will read into that what they will, won't they? But I, I also think as well that Celtic put a case forward that this is a wonderful chance to address what really is it the crux of the matter here. It's the inept officiating and the VAR officials, those who are operating VAR, you know, they are they're brutal. Let's be honest. They are absolutely brutal. And sh- and I hope Celtic go in and make their points and then try and get some meaningful discussion. Crawford Allen's leaving because of a vote of no confidence. Aberdeen, Motherwell, Rangers, Celtic, in the last few months, they've all issued statements and said the referee is shambolic and those who are operating VAR are... Are they? So, I, d- I don't want the SFA to use this Brendan Rodgers as a scapegoat to deflect from the real issue here, which is that the officiating in this country is diabolical and those who are operating the VAR uh, are, are shambolic. And we have to have a meaningful discussion about this because all the clubs are now seeing through it for what it is. And if Crawford Dallin, who's the head of the referees, uh, has fallen on his sword, then it's kind of admission of guilt that there's something wrong in this country with officiating, not just for Celtic Rangers, but Aberdeen, Motherwell, Hibs, Hearts, all the clubs. So it's time to have some meaningful dialogue on this rather than just say, Brendan Rodgers, oh, you, you said we were incompetent. Here's a two game, three game, four game, or whatever ban, you know, and make somebody like Brendan, who to you and I is the epitome of coolness and calmness, and, you know, he exudes. Uh, you know, he's just personality, he's, and he's always very respectful. So I think if they throw the book at Brendan Rodgers, and it just, I, I, I think as a, as a body, they're just saying, can't criticise us. And, uh, and I, I don't think that's helpful or constructive for the game. But that's like, that's the attitude that, the referees in the SFA seem to have to criticism. I don't know if you saw the the stuff last week, the report that came out uh, regarding Ian Maxwell, the you know the yeah. chief executive of of the SFA, and he was said to have had you know I think the the word that was used was stormy talks with um, the the officials and their frustrations that they directed to him, the the chief executive of the SFA, was that. Um, they felt they weren't being backed enough in the face of this criticism from clubs. And Ian Maxwell then came out with this statement saying basically three things, I think it was, that um, those in power at the clubs have to learn uh, you know, the rules better, they have to learn VAR better, and they have to stop um, basically mudslinging, really, and, and being critical of the officials. And to me, that was very telling that, that their attitude to all of this is that they're the ones being harshly treated and and if clubs feel like they're the ones that are getting you know the raw you know the the whatever raw deal here and um the officials feel it's them then you're going to struggle to to yeah. move forward um the question i would ask is going back to the brendan rogers comments and you know you, you rightly say certainly in scotland he hasn't been in this position before I can't comment for the rest of his career, but I can't. Um, I can't imagine he's been in too many of these, if if ever before, because he's not that kind of guy. Why? Um, why did he make the comments after the game? I mean, I know he was frustrated. I get all that. We we all were, but Brendan Rodgers will have been frustrated yeah. before after matches, and and he's one of those guys that when he when he does stuff and says things, there's always a reason for it. I just think he. He'd had enough, you know. <laughs> Personally, with the he could everybody couches it as honest mistakes, but I think it was the fact that it cost Celtic the chance to go top of the table that day. And I think also that 
he, he, he was careful with his wording as well. I know he used the word incompetent, but he was talking about the re-refereeing of games, Hamish. And he pointed out that the referee, Don Robertson, had mm-hmm. put this two instances with his own eyes and didn't have the courage of his convictions to back himself. So something was all right then. What, what happened? And it was the fact that John Beaton was on VAR and told him to go and have a look at these. And I think he was sort of highlighting the clear and obvious uh, you know, sub- subjectivity of clear and obvious mm-hmm. when both of those incidents, yeah. in- incidents even weren't clear and obvious errors, were they? So I think no. he was just frustrated at that. And I also think Brendan Rodgers knows what he's saying and knows what he's doing. So I think there was an element of, OK, if this lands me on an SFA charge, so be it. But I want to see it. Because it is yeah. totally out of character, isn't it? So, and would a good lawyer get you off the hook on that one by highlighting all that kind of stuff? And also as well, we've spoken before, and, and, and Celtic had time to prepare the case, and it was, it is a few days before I broke all that kind of stuff, but Celtic are perfectly within their rights to hear these tapes. Now, whether these tapes are made public or not, then so be it, but, you know, so a lot could hinge on that in terms of what the lawyers do. Because Sky and all that heard them, didn't they? Because they've, they've got access to them. Yeah, they hear it in real time, they, don't they? They hear it in real time. So, you know, so... And and I know Rangers heard the Willie Column tapes, didn't they, from Parkhead with regards to the Alistair Johnson handball and then proceeded to brief one of their media partners. Yes. Which the exactly. SFA then had to respond to because they said they'd briefed them wrongly. So... Precedent's been set here. You can ask for the the tapes or the you know the, the conversations that were had over those VAR decisions. Now, whether you choose to make them public, then so be it. But, but I I think Celtic are clearly within their rights to, or maybe they have heard the, these tapes and think, okay, we're backing our manager all the way here because we feel that he, he doesn't have a case to answer because of said thing, X, Y, and Z that are maybe being said on the Ten Castle tapes, the fact that Crawford Allen has now walked or, you know, uh, fallen on his sub by way of a vote of no confidence. So I, I don't think Celtic would take this all the way if they didn't think that they had a case to answer for themselves as a club and also their manager. So I just think Thursday's going to be really, really interesting, regardless of what happens and regardless yeah. of the outcome. You know, it's, discussion's uh, going to go on for days oh, after it, isn't it? It's right. going to just, yeah, it's going to con- it's going to continue right up to Ibrox, isn't it? Let's yeah. be honest. And then what happens at Ibrox will happen. But you know, it's it's a big week for Celtic in that sense. Off the pitch, it's a big week because obviously there's a case to be for hopefully one. And then obviously they go to Livingston, and in the past they've not enjoyed going to Livingston, but recently. Did very well in that pitch, and you know, lots of people are saying they're hoping that it's the last time you see that pitch this uh, in the seasons ever. to come. Ever, yeah, and uh, fair enough. But yeah, so it's a uh, it's a it's shaped not to be a kind of. I, I said it's a week of reckoning, but it's certainly something that will can could shape and make or break Celtic's title bid, couldn't it? Uh, yeah, just final question on this maestro tough one. Wondering what you what you think will happen. Tony on Thursday. I'm I'm hearing like you towards a suspension. I think he might get two suspended and a censure as to his future conduct. And it'll kick in if he appears before them again. I just think that I, I just think that uh, if they do throw the book at him then I don't think it looks good for the SFA as an organisation. And I know you're not allowed to criticise him. I know he said they're incompetent. I know he's named John Beaton. I get all that, and if he gets a two-game ban, then so be it. You know, you, I guess you, you can't really complain, but I think there's there's a case to be argued here with his exemplary ca- character and the fact that it is out of character. He's never stood before them before, and it's taken something like that to get him to that stage where he was wound up to the point where he... And it was a calm and measured yeah. statement. Yeah. It wasn't a rant. Wasn't he angry? You know, wasn't an outburst. It was a cool, calm, and measured statement that he made 
after the game at Tinker. So I was there, I saw it, I heard it for myself. So uh, there was no foam on it at the mouth. He had something to say and he said it. You know, so um, I think uh, other managers in the past have had something to say. They've said things, haven't they? And I believe Craig Levine got a fine, didn't he? £5,000 for that outburst with the Dundee United game at Ibrox, which I don't think he ever paid. Hmm. And then became the Scotland manager. <laughs> so, you know, work that one out if you can. But yeah, I don't think he ever paid that. I, I remember saying the first the first time I was on, I was speaking about that. You get fined yeah. five grand and then people came to me afterwards and said, Tony, I don't think he ever paid that. So that precedent's been said before, isn't there? About managers saying things. I mean, Stephen Gerrard, his very first game up here, said that if referees were out to get Rangers, didn't they? And it's been happening for years. You know, even Which excited. to me is a you know a far greater crime than Brendan Rogers questioning. Comp- Brendan Rogers didn't question integrity, did he? He was, he was no. you know, he questioned their competence. Yeah, which is diff- different thing. Yeah, and so they they decided that Stephen Jerry never had a case to answer for when those comments were made. He never named anybody. But he just he, he said that it's been going on for years, didn't he? The referees were against Rangers, and like you, when I when I saw that, and then I was kind of laying it up against Brendan Rodgers' comments, I was like, okay, uh, someone has to explain why that wasn't cited and why Brent, well, I know why Brendan Rodgers has been cited, but how you can say that that's not worthy of punishment and Brendan Rodgers possibly is. But yeah. uh, again, you're just not allowed to criticise the SFA and the referees and I'm astonished that they really do think they're the victims and all of this. All 12 Scottish professional football league clubs or Scottish Premiership clubs can't be wrong, Amish. All 12 of them have a vote in no confidence in Crawford Allen and they set up uh, the current set on the current VAR operatives. They can't all be wrong, can they? I know every club and every fan and supporter could compel you a dossier of decisions that have gone against their club this season alone and going back many seasons. Every everybody does that or can do that. But we are done as who watch Celtic, so I'm specifically commenting on Celtic and those perceived marginal calls that they don't get which somehow go in favour of other teams. But I thought Mullable's statement last week was terrific when they were talking quoting the I Fab rules and asking about the handball that saw them got a goal disallowed. You know that I think everybody really does want to have constructive dialogue now because it's just getting it's getting beyond a joke VAR's intervening in every game for every club and it's costing them isn't it yeah. that's, that's the bottom line yeah I, I mean for for me it's it's you know I'm not we're not going way into VAR again because I feel like we do that most videos but for me it's um you know VAR's impact in the games but it's the consistency and, and the lack of it that's the big thing you have as um, having that, you know, a Wata penalty go against us, and then either side of that, you've got like the Motherwell guy literally punching the ball in the box, nothing given, and you have the St. Johnson guy in our last match handballing on the on the line, nothing given. So it's just the consistency that gets to me more than anything. Um, what else is on your mind, Tony? You, you speak about the action on the pitch. Um, we're back on, on Sunday against Livingston. Can't wait for that, to be honest. Just... Just think they'll have the bit between the teeth as well. Even Thursday. What, what just, gives you what gives you that impression? I, I just think it's kind of there's a groundswell. I, I just you know, Callum McGregor could be back. Rio Hattati could be back. Kyogo is back firing in all cylinders. I think the break will have done him good, but there's just a lot of positives for me. Uh, Cameron Carter Vickers is back as well. That kind of stuff. So I just think that this. This group of players now have the bit between the teeth, and as you said, if Thursday goes against them, then they can just use that as fuel, can't they? For I, mm. I think these are the things that you have to uh, sort of, you know, that that season mentality that Brendan has created now, and the narratives that he spoke about. I just think that a lot of players have just they're, they're buying into that, and the last few performances, last couple of performances, certainly have, have given me a lot of hope and scope for that. This group of players can see it over the line; they're good enough to go to iBooks and not just get a draw, they're good enough to go there and win. They really are. And, you know, you need a lot of variables to happen, but I think a lot of those variables can happen. Guys stepping up to the plate, and I'm just looking forward to seeing 
a chatty back too. I would play him for half an hour at least on uh, mm-hmm. Sunday against Livingston. He has to get game time. And then if he comes through that, he's in my team. I think he's in your team as well for Ibrox. To, to start? Yeah, to start. Yeah, without a doubt. And, I, and I've said before, my <laughs> my left field shout is to go with Adam Eden and Kyogo up front at Ibrox. Wow. I, I, I just, I think that makes perfect sense. Got to ask questions of that defence. Because I think you can get a can get joy out of Connor Golson and John Sutter, but you only get joy if you play two guys up front. I know people say, "Ah, you'll, you'll never do it. You'll never do it." It's a perfect opportunity to go there. Got to ask questions, and that it would really, it would really kind of put the cat amongst the pigeons in terms of because Rangers would probably be preparing for one guy up front, wouldn't they? Jogo or Ida. So, yeah, and it'll be if, if it's one up top, it'll be Kyogo, won't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, so like Kyogo Kyo will play. Ah, uh, Brooks giving his record. Without a doubt, I guess. Well, him. Right. <laughs> um, I want to play the two of them. I've got to be honest. I just think that you're, and that's the biggest statement of intent that you're going to win. Uh, I yeah. just, uh, I would. But again, that's what I want and what we get are two different things. But again, you have to focus on Livingston, don't you? It is the most important game of the season because it's the next one. It's the countdown to, you know, there's eight to go. Seven wins and a draw wins it. Eight wins obviously wins it. But uh, people say, oh, seven wins and a draw at Ibrooks. If, if one of those draws is at Ibrooks, obviously they win it. But I said to you the other day, I, I'm not entertaining the thought of going to Ibrooks for a draw. I'm not entertaining the thought of winning. Yeah, goals. 100%. Uh, maybe, I mean, maybe if I mean, maybe if you're later in the game and it's you know course, 85, yeah, yeah. 86 minutes, you kind of realise at that point like a draw does it. But certainly going into the game, it's a game we want to win. Yeah. Just um, plenty of time to chat about Ibrox. I mean, yeah. Livingston um, is is the team top for Livingston and the you know the the kind of warning of of being complacent is is that easier to to put across to the players given that we played them a couple of weeks ago and it was a bit of a kind of testing match for is like you would maybe look at Livingston's form and see they've won three league games all season and think right we just really have to turn up and beat this team um but we did have a a bit of a test in the cup against them so they clearly showed that albeit without Carter Vickers etc they can cause us issues yeah I remember the the legend that as Jock Steen said that every team talk was laced with the fear that they could lose any game Conversely, you know that Celtic could win. They are expected to win every game, but he always had that in the back. And he and he drummed that into the players. And I think it was on the back of the 1971 League Cup final tanking that they took from Patrick Thistle. He beat four one. Patrick Thistle was four up, and he said that that illustrated perfectly to him, perfectly to him that you know Celtic could lose any game of football. And I I think that's your approach there, Hamish. You know you. You have to be wary of your opponent, regardless of their situation, and they're also fighting for their lives as well. So they're 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 entering last chance saloon stuff. People think they're gone already, but it's still not mathematically or arithmetically possible yet. So they've still got something to play for. They're a team that have been a thorn in the flesh of Celtic many times at that at, at that ground on that surface. So. You know, all the variables are there for Celtic, you know, to slip up, as they say. But I mm. think you have to turn around and just... If you can't go to Livingston and win in a title race and you've got ambitions on, you know, retaining your title, then do do you really deserve to win the title? The answer is clearly, been... clearly no. So uh, you have to go there and just... You've got to cope with that pressure, Hamish. Yeah. You've got to cope with it. That, that's... Uh, as I say, I spoke to Paul Lambert last week and he said that's part and parcel of being at a club at Celtic. If you can't handle these kind of games, you shouldn't be there. And I I think that this team can handle those games. They just need to go out. It's, it's another tough one, but it's going to be eight tough ones. So, you know, deal yeah. with that. Find the coping mechanism, get the result, and then you move on to the next one. But uh, this one's paramount. You know, it's 
as, as Lang would say, it's a non-negotiable that you drop points in this game. That's the end of story, isn't yeah. it? That's it. Yeah, it's, and yeah, the, it's a problematic stadium. But recently, we've played well there and got decent results. So I don't see any reason why we can't do that on Sunday. Yeah, we've come, we've come out with the right attitude in the last three games, and I think we, we've battered them every time, even mm. with ten men. I agree with you. It'll be you know, you know, a, a tough match, as we say before. It'll be a tough match. But if Celtic turn up with the right attitude. Mm. It shouldn't really be a tough afternoon for us. If we turn up with, you know, the right attitude, we're right at it, we're up for the fight, we're, you know, playing well, you know, in possession, creating chances, doing all the things that we do well when we're at the top of our game and we're on it, it should be, you know, a pretty routine victory because Livingston, as much as it's away from home and, you know, they've had their moments against us, they are a, a kind of struggle inside at the moment. So, and I, I think the team will be up for it on Sunday. I think... Oh, um, in a strange way, I always think after an international break, sometimes an away match is kind of what you want in a weird way because sometimes when you come back after international breaks, it's a game right at Celtic Park and maybe the team aren't quite at it right from the start because it's been a break and you know all of that stuff and you know the crowds maybe a little bit subdued as well. Sunday we've got a weird kind of dynamic that we get at Livingston because. It's a home game, basically, in terms of you've got 90% yeah, of the yeah. stadium, but the crowd will really be up for it. It won't kind of be maybe like a flat atmosphere. So I think with all of that, you know, in mind, um, the team will be fine. The worry I always have is is that pitch and that kind of slowing up our play. But as you say, we've really dealt with it the last three times. So I'm feeling good about Sunday um, and I'm excited to see you know the team really kick on I know we had that disappointing Hearts game but I think the previous two matches at Celtic Park that we've had St Johnson and Dundee have both been good performances and mm. um, you know Dundee was more than that so I, I think there's a lot to to build on there um, but it's just every match Tony at the moment you, you just you can't afford to take anything for granted especially this season because this is the kind of game we've we've slipped up in a, a fair few times said before, your nerves are going to be shredded by the end of this. It starts again on Sunday, doesn't it? Because that's it. You're, you're eight to go. And I don't think there's any breaks now, is it? It's a straight eight. Uh, along for the weekend for the Scottish Cup semi-final, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, so you've got a straight nine games where, you know, two pieces of silverware are at stake. You know that this is, again, you get back to it, this is what you sign for Celtic for. This is, this is when you really flex your muscles, don't you? And you say, right, we're a good team. We'll show you why we're a good team. And I'm like you. I'm not o- overly confident for Livingston. I've never been overly confident. But I think if Celtic turn up and do the right things and do what they've been doing in, in the past, you know, recently, then I think it should be okay. It should be a routine victory. And uh, it should be one ticked off of the eight you say, right, mm. on to the next one. Uh, so, yeah, and I'm confident that these guys now, you know, to quote we Ryan, understand the assignment. You know, the assignment is you're, you are entering a mini-season now. This is it. Eight games to win a title and a Scottish Cup semi-final to get into the final and play whoever that may be in the final. So, uh, you have to just... This is... If Celtic are going to have a run of consistent... Uh, wins and results this is the perfect and optimum time to do it isn't it yeah can't wait for it uh, Green Lichty saying Cal Mack coming back is more important than Hitati in my opinion I'd play him forward and keep a water and Henrik McClarson wondering uh, if we start Hitati on that death trap of a pitch I think we both said off the bench for half an hour um, and then you know see, see for, for the week after um, Maestro wondering if CCV will play at Livingston again. I think there's a, a genuine question, you know, question mark over that, given that Carter Vickers has missed matches. But I think you know he has to be part of that because without Carter Vickers, I, I fear for us in any game. Can um, he I think afford not need... to play? Right. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the, ar- the argument is, can you get through Livingston on that pitch and then definitely have him fit for Ibrooks? Can you risk him picking up something? But I, I do think you just. I, I don't think you can look ahead to Ibrooks at this stage. I think Livingston is the next game. It's it's mm. the 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 next game, the biggest game, and Carter Vickers has to start has for to me play. unless he unless he's got some sort of niggle. He has to. But play. You do- yeah. Yeah. He has to play to um, you get this, to you move maneuver yourself into a position where you can afford the luxury of taking them off. 
Because if Karen Carter Vickers doesn't play, I think you're sending a signal out to David Martindale to send in his big artillery and just bully and buffet your centre backs around. Yeah. You know, the, the guys up front that they have. And uh, so I don't want that for a start because I always go back to the Lyndon Dykes performance when he scored twice and Celtic lost 2 0. Yeah. Julian. Uh, Julian. And what a time of it he gave Lyndon Dykes. And it was agricultural football. They never yeah. ever, they never even had it. And they still beat Celtic 2 0 because Julian got rumbled up by a big physical striker. Cameron Carter Vickers doesn't he get rumbled up by big physical strikers. He's like, that. bring it on. So with a physical striker, see Cameron Carter Vickers and the Celtic starting lineup. They're like, that. And it was the same with Big Bobo. Big Bobo used to frighten people by just being on the team sheet. Just thought, I don't fancy it today. So Cameron Carter Vickers is that presence. I just think if yeah. he doesn't play, and I get that the pitch is, but we're at the stage of the season where you can't afford to take gambles in terms of your title bid. And I, I just think if you if Cameron Carter doesn't play in that centre defender on Sunday, then you're inviting pressure. You're inviting that agricultural stuff. And you know, Celtics sometimes struggle to deal with it. Yeah. Um and yeah, I think that sounds actually. Um yeah, perfect. Uh Aye, I'm looking forward to it, Tony. It's going to be a, a busy few days, isn't it? Thursday's going to be mad. Um, to, it's going to be interesting to see what happens and, and, you know, the weekend football's going to be good as well. And then it's only going to go up a notch or a thousand ahead of uh, Ibrooks a week later. I appreciate your time. Again, Tony, I appreciate your insight in all things SFA disciplinary <laughs> action. Um, it's much appreciated. Thanks, everyone, for... For tuning in, just a, a wee final shout out for this offer uh, that we've got at the moment. Six months of access uh, for one single pound and you get a free Kyogo Furuhashi print uh, as part of that as well. Uh, great stuff, everyone. Thanks. Catch you this time tomorrow.